it, I guess. Good morning, everybody. My name is Patrick B. Song. I'm a multimedia specialist education technology services at Penn State. I'm here with my colleague, Elizabeth Pyatt, who's an instructional designer and accessibility expert in teaching and learning with technology. Uh, we're gonna give you a little introduction to audio description today. We'll, we'll discuss what, um, let me get the slides going here. We'll discuss um, what audio description is, some guidelines on how to do it, uh, laws, who might benefit besides the blind, and how audio description can be added to videos. Uh, we'll touch on uh, costs, and there's a few resources at the end too. So let's take a quick look at what audio description actually is basically providing a description of what blind or visually impaired people would be missing as they listen to a video. I'm gonna play a sample video here from the Hunger Games. Um, if you want to experience what blind people uh, experience, you can just close your eyes and we'll listen to this. Signs on a tall wire fence read district boundary, no access beyond this point, and high voltage. Katniss steps through a gap in the wires and heads into the woods beyond. She glances around before reaching into the hollow of a fallen tree. She draws out a wooden bow. From another tree, she plucks out a sheaf of arrows and straps it over her shoulder. Katniss makes her way through thick green vegetation. Bow and arrow at the ready, she walks over a fallen tree suspended over the forest floor. She pauses, her gaze locked on a deer in the distance. Leaning against a tree trunk, she aims the bow and arrow. The deer sniffs the air and moves out of sight. Okay, so that's a example of um, what someone uh, who's blind or visually impaired might hear when they hear an audio description of a video and that was pretty well done i have to say it's uh you know very descriptive and everything um so some guidelines for audio description would be to describe only what you can see and not things that are implied like the actor's intentions. Um, you want to you want to let the the listener figure out for themselves what's what's actually happening. Um, try not to distract from the original content. Uh, you don't want to um, uh, talk over uh, some of the audio or you know, change the original video in any way. That you want to give them the best possible experience. And uh, just we had a quick question. Do you happen to know if the descriptions were from the novel or if they were generated differently? I don't know. Actually, I found that on uh, YouTube as a sample. I thought it was a pretty good sample. The thing about that sample, though, is there was no uh dialogue going on and that's the tricky part <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit uh some of the other things uh you, you would describe will be like who who's in the image uh sort of their age range are they teenagers uh older people preteens uh their hair description, uh, what they're wearing, uh, anything to uh, paint the scene. Uh, could be uh, relationships too, whether it's somebody else's mother or brother-in-law. Only if, only if the video actually um, somehow lets you know that. And you might uh, describe people by their notable features, and that would include race or ethnicity. Ethnicity, if it's known. 
or if it's valuable to to understanding what's going on. And you want to move from the general to the specific. Uh, you want to set the scene. Uh, describe the whole area, uh, the environment, and and then go into more detail if you can. Uh, describing color, um, most most blind people weren't blind all their life, and so they have some idea of what color is. And many of the, even the blind have an idea what what color means. Uh, they have some understanding of significance of what colors, certain colors might mean. Uh, directional information, you know, which way the action's moving, left to right, top, bottom. Uh, what's happening, what gestures or being shown and that uh, the blind person wouldn't be able to tell. Um, some of the objects, I guess, um, and some of the actions that, that are really important to the scene, like the, somebody breaks a window, but they might hear the window break, but uh, it would still be good to tell them what they did to break it. Maybe they used their hand or a hammer or something like that. Uh, again, painting the scene, uh, the sun setting low, but you're not telling them whether it's morning or night uh, because the video might not tell you that. Uh, some of the details like a clock read 7 a.m., uh, two-story brick house. Uh, some of the more details to really paint the scene. There's some more examples here. Um, one is like uh, the phone rings. Uh, you don't tell them that the phone rings because they can hear it, you know, obviously. Uh, but you might tell them who's who's uh, answering the phone. But maybe not who's on the other end unless they can tell. Uh, some other examples there. Um, one might be if they pick up a, a photo, you might describe how big the photo is and and who the people are in the photo that might be important to the scene. But clarity is more important than colorful imagery. So you don't have to be a complete expert. Uh, you just have to get the message across what's going on. Uh, some of the, I don't, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the audio description laws, but there were some laws passed, uh, anti-discrimination laws, uh, 21st Century Video Accessibility, Americans with Disability Act, and Sections 504 and 508, the Rehabilitation Act. Uh, they pretty much require that the same laws like for um, closed captioning for the deaf and uh, audio description for the blind. Um, but some of the wording has been challenged in lawsuits. Netflix has been sued, uh, Broadway's Hamilton, AMC theaters, UC Berkeley are a few examples. And again, there's a more description of the, the laws. But uh, I'll leave these here for the recording if people want to read them, but I don't want to dwell on that so much. They, they are expanding the rules to they're going to require more audio description in the future from uh, people who offer programming. Uh, Hamilton was soon sued by a blind person uh, because they didn't provide any type of audio description. And they 
people tend to not do it because of the expense and they're not sure how well the, the play is going to go over, for example. So they don't want to put the money into it until they have to, maybe. And Cal Berkeley was sued uh, for lack of audio description, uh, YouTube videos and lectures. Uh, they didn't have any type of audio description or al alternative formats. Uh, AMC Theaters was sued too. They they weren't providing um, uh, any type of audio description services, and the ones they did, a lot of times the batteries were dead in the in the equipment, or it just didn't work, or the the people that worked there uh, didn't know how to use it, or that sort of thing. So it really detracted from the the person's enjoyment of the movies. And you figure people at work at the theaters are usually getting minimum wage and they're probably not putting a whole lot into it and they don't <laughs> they don't learn how to use this stuff or keep it up. Uh, maybe because it's not used that often too and they forget to check the batteries and that sort of thing or Maybe they even lose it. Oh, uh, just a quick comment from Marilyn. She said some of her Netflix shows have captioning, and I guess she doesn't know how to take them off or if they can be taken off. You can go into your um, uh, settings in Netflix and turn off closed captioning. Yeah, just... Uh, that should have happened with me on Comcast cable. All of a sudden, I was getting audio description for The Big Bang Theory. Oh, really? Yeah. And I had to go into the settings, and I had to check primary audio. Oh, OK. Um, I wanted to mention the, some of the other benefits. Uh, just like closed captioning, not just the deaf uh, can benefit, but um, so not just the blind would benefit from audio description, uh, especially for uh, people with autism who might not recognize some emotional cues, like somebody's sad or happy or that sort of thing. They they just don't pick that up, and they might have to ask people they're watching with what's going on because they're not really quite getting it. So audio description there would really help them. And a lot of people don't pick up on details. Um, they call that inattentional blindness. But if it's described, they might pick it up. Again, the audio description would would say someone came in with a frown on their face, might uh, identify those emotions. Just talked about that, I guess. Uh, multitasking, that would be people like me, who uh, I'm usually on the computer at night and I have the TV on, so uh, audio description might help. I have to look up every once in a while to see what's going on. <laughs> but. Um, I'm usually working on something on my computer and listening to TV at the same time. So, and uh, so maybe there's a bus driver too that's uh, kind of listening to a video that everybody else is watching. And if they were able to listen to uh, the audio description, that would help them enjoy the movie while they're driving or if you're doing any other type of task. Uh, the cost of audio description, that's that's the big thing here. It's a lot more expensive than even closed captioning. Uh, we looked into this uh, last year, and that's the big barrier. And it's not really easy either. It's, uh, it's kind of tricky um, because, uh, well, like the, the Hunger Games was all you know, silent, there was no dialogue, but 
with the um, whenever you have dialogue, then you have to try to fit that in between uh, what people are saying, and it, sometimes it really limits what you can say in that short period. Uh, so the, it's not really easy, and the, so it's expensive to do, and the cost can vary quite a bit. We looked at prices anywhere from $15 to $75 a minute. Uh, um, uh, there's a couple of examples there, WB, WBGH at 35 and Halbert at 26. Uh, Penn State is a member of AMAC though, and I believe we can get it for five to seven dollars a minute. So if you really need it, you might go through Keith Jarvis. Um, so Marilyn was asking, should we have this service at Penn State? We should, <laughs> but just like uh, closed captioning, it's it's going to be hard to get anybody on board. We wanted to get a service going for that, but it was. Um, we got next basically for trying to do it. The expense is just too cost prohibitive and they want to just send it out all the time. I think also, um, I think Pat hopefully will cover this. There are some things you can do during the production stage or after the production to minimize your audio description cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, there are different ways to add audio description. Uh, one is adding a second user selected selectable soundtrack with audio description that replaces the original soundtrack. Uh, that's kind of a tricky thing to do. You have to you have to have somebody that knows what they're doing with video or um, and that sort of thing, because there's a certain way you have to set it up. I have a link at the end on how to do that on a Mac. There's a um, an app called Subler that can do that. It can bring in another video. So you basically have two videos, and then you turn off the, vi the video portion of one, so you have just the audio, and then they can choose between the two audio tracks the regular audio track or the one with the um, audio description. Um, uh, another way is to provide a, a whole different movie. So you have two movies, one with and one without the audio description. And a second soundtrack that um, is in sync with the original soundtrack that can be turned on or off. Uh, and another way, sometimes you have to actually pause the movie and add description to it. An example of that might be maybe you have a math lecture where there's a equation on the board and the professor writes out this equation and you almost have to stop the video and describe what was drawn on the on the board uh, so they get a, a mental picture of where they're going and then and then let the video go again until you can describe it again and that's going to make for a longer video than you had originally that's still another way that might have to be done. Uh, static text alternative might be another thing um, where they could re use a screen reader maybe. Yeah, I was about to say this when we were talking about this, uh, one of our blind students said that if you had a deaf blind student, the text transcript of like the video, audio, and the visual would be the only way the student could get that content. Yeah. 
Um, something fairly new, I guess, is the HTML5 video can allow for a web VTT description file. It uses a track element and type description. Um, it's, it's not fully um, supported yet, though, among all video players. So it's, it's probably something that's going to come more in the future. Uh, there's a few resources. Uh, the best one, I would say, if you really wanted to get into this, is the first uh, bullet there, the DCMP description key. Uh, I learned quite a bit from that when we started looking into this last year. And we have uh, some info on the PSU accessibility site, the link there, and the ACB. Um, Link is pretty good too. Uh, Disney Disney has an app called um, Disney Movies Anywhere app, and you turn it on while you're watching a Disney movie, and it automatically syncs to the movie via the sound, and it will give you an audio description as the movie plays. It sounds really cool. I haven't really used it, but that's. Um, uh, that might be something that comes in the future uh, more often too. Uh, I have a link there to the Mac demo that uses iMovie and Subler. Uh, I can probably play that real quick. Hey everyone, my name's Dominic and I'll be showing you how to make your videos and video podcasts accessible to the blind and visually impaired. This is very You'll simplified. iMovie, which came with your Mac, and Subler, which is it might give you an idea of what, what goes on at the end of this video. First, let me show you the clip that we'll be working with. By the way, I'm not seeing the video, so. Oh, really? No yeah, way. you might want to put the uh, the link into the chat. Okay. It is on the on the screen. Now, if you were a blind person, do you, do you see the, um, difficult to tell exactly what was going on in that video. No. So we want to Our include point. enough description to keep everybody on the same page but without interrupting the content. This brings us to step one. Write a script describing what's going on in your video. You can do this on a pen and paper, or you could do this in pages, or notepad, or anything that you like, as long as you can read it comfortably later. Now, I usually watch the video and type as I'm watching, but since this is a short clip, I was able to type it from memory. You may want to watch your video, type it out, and take as much time as you need to make sure that you've included the details that you want to okay. include in your description. All right, well, get back to that. Uh, that's pretty much all we have. Um, I didn't know anything at all about audio description until we uh, kind of studied it a little bit last year. We, we took a video that was... Uh, it was an old, uh, look like a candid camera video or something. And we tried to add audio to it. And it was really difficult. I mean, because there was so much action going on, there was uh, uh, audience laughter and there was a narrator describing what the people were doing. But you, you still had to do audio description to get a good picture of the action that was going on. It was uh, basically telling these people not to walk on the black squares or something, or, or only walk on the black squares. It was like a uh, uh, some kind of business. I forget what they were doing. I don't, like a, was it a barber shop or something? I it was forget. like a candid camera experiment. Yeah, people so you... were going in and so yeah, people would like they'd set up an experiment. I think like they had to only walk on the black squares. And they had to go and sit in like a little booth area. And so you had to describe what they were doing. And they were coming in and some people were trying really hard and some people just didn't care at all and they just walked and or some people started doing it and then they didn't do it very well after that. And it was it was kind of silly, but but it gave me an idea how hard it was to 
actually do it for a lot of videos uh, because you have to somehow fit it in. If, if you weren't using some kind of video editing software like uh, Adobe Premiere or uh, iMovie or Final Cut, where you can actually see the um, audio wave and you can identify kind of dead spaces where you might be able to fit in audio description. But some of them are just full of audio. And like that one, I had to actually stop the video to give um, a description of what was going on. And it really, um, affected the enjoyment of the of the video because it really kind of stopped everything abruptly and you get this little audio description and then it carries on uh, you almost have to do some audio ducking where the audio the original audio kind of trails off so you can put your audio description in and then it uh, starts up again uh, from low to full volume to give a more smooth transition. But it, it's tricky. Uh, <laughs> if, if you ever try it, uh, take a look at that link uh, on iMovie because it's a pretty good example of how they do it. And that would be, that would be one of the ones I described before where you could choose the alternate audio track, uh, it's using Subler, where you pull in uh, two movies to make one movie, but you turn the video off of one of the movies. So you have two soundtracks and they can choose between the two. Uh, I mean, it's not, not that hard to actually build it if you watch that video. Uh, just kind of hard to... Uh, <laughs> fit it into some videos. Some are a lot harder than others. I would say the um, Hunger Games one would be the best case scenario if you wanted to do it. Actually, I want to, um, do you mind if I, there are some quick and dirty tricks you can use too. If you sure. mind if I, um, I, I'm gonna see if I can share my screen. I need to do anything here. Uh, yeah, you have to stop sharing if you don't mind. Okay. So I actually, um, okay, let's see if that'll work. I've been uh, working with um, accommodations for students with visual disabilities. I've actually gotten some experience. Uh, can you see? So, I thought you, a lot of our videos for educational use aren't quite as complicated as drama videos. So sometimes uh, you can find ways to either do it, plan for it, or do some things after the after the fact. It also helps that most videos are shorter. So this is sort of one that I had to do in real life. So this was from this example would be in a speech. Uh, speech disorders course and um, autism comes up because uh, some kids with autism also have speech disorders. So this is uh, this is a child with autism who's spinning a lot. So and sometimes there isn't even any audio there's no audio. There might be in this case, but I'm pretending there's no audio. So you could have an audio description track saying child spin, spin, spin some more. But another, this is, you could also have a description saying that the video is a minute and 25 seconds and the child is spinning in the entire video. Yeah, that's good. So that's something to think about. And, and then I'm going to try, so this is sort of a math demo. I'm going to, I don't know what the audio is going to be like, but um, we'll see what it is. Okay, for this video, we will introduce the basic idea of set theory. Now, all a set is is a collection of objects 
So the first thing he said, we're going to be talking about set theory. That means you don't have to describe the text set theory because the narrator helpfully provided it for you. So that's some people call that embedded description, meaning you in your storyboarding, you take care to describe all the relevant objects. You describe what's written out. You describe what you're holding, maps, diagrams, things like that. And that will also minimize your need to do it after the facts. So I'm going to play some more and see what he does. Where order and repetition is irrelevant. Let's see, give you a few simple examples. So we have to set one, two, four, five, and seven. And we'll use curly bracket to denote the idea of a set, a collection of objects. Thank you. <laughs> he actually did it right. So yeah. you, you probably, if you can get your script to that point, you're really not going to have to do much audio description at all. So mm -hmm. um, I, I'm going to stop there, but um, I, I think that kind of gives you the idea. Of yeah, way I, I think that's it. important if 